So hello there and welcome. Um, well, this week we're doing slippers. And this is um, a slipper for a quite small child, a toddler. Um, so um, let's run through it. I've got the pattern here. Now I was very fortunate that I managed to find a conversion chart on the internet of shoe sizes for children. So I basically used that sole as as my template. Now this is um, the thermal layer that you would get for um, a piece of furniture for a table. Uh, I bought it in a craft shop. Um, hopefully you can find something suitable. Um, I love it because it's got grip. I'm saying um a lot, isn't it? That's bad. Now I've cheated. I've already cut it out because the worst thing that could happen to me is that I could end up with two left booties. Yes, two left feet. That would be bad. Now this is the pattern I used on that one. Let's set it there so we can see it. And um, yeah, what I'm using is fake fur. I don't know, I think you should keep little toes as snuggly as possible. Because, um, you know, you're only a baby once and I think they react really badly. So although this is rough and ready on the outside, it's actually perfectly smooth. There's no outer hems in the bottom or anything. So it's all snuggly-wuggly for their little tootsies. Now I've got fake fabric fur. Um, yeah, this is the end of a lot of projects. And I've got some felt as well. Now, neither three of these um, fabrics fray, but I, I will be hemming them anyway. So this pattern, now I've cut it in half, so this is the fold line for the fur, but I need a bit less fur than I do because I need a hem allowance for the top on the... Oh, I really hope I've got enough fur. I measured it off screen and um, I do, I do, I know I do, but um, yes, it seems a bit tight now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, such is life. But I really want to use as much of this as possible. Um, I've done quite a few projects with it for the camera. And um, this is one, believe it or not, there's another two with this fur coming up. Um, so, yes, I'm going to get another two bits out of this fur for other projects. Yeah, trust me, trust me, I know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to cut this out. And um, it's quite a simple little template. One thing you've just got to remember is that this should curl round there. So although it may look the same, we've got to make sure it's long enough to curl round. <coughs> so yeah. Now you could use a pin to do this. I'm just going to do it quickly. Um, because obviously I literally only just made one, so I can remember quite, quite firmly in my mind how it's supposed to go. So I'm just checking that I'm not falling off or anything, and that they're staying lined. So all I need to do is just tidy up these little bits. there we are. So that's my lining, my fur lining. <coughs> and I need to do my top. So I um, need this cut open and I need probably a bit more of this fur on the fold just to do this hemming across the top. Now I've done it cross stitch. Uh, you know, on the on the old sewing machine, um, but do whatever you're comfortable with. I think it looked lovely hand sewn, but um, time with me, I um, I didn't feel the need to, so I didn't. So I've lined this up. I've lined it on the fold. That's just because I'm literally using a scrap of cloth, and I um, I find it easier to make sure that I've got enough fabric if I do that because um, I can see that I've got both of them in now. So I'm just lining it around with a pencil. I can use a pin to keep them together, but for time, I'm just going to cut round. 
round and I am going to cut that fold because I do need it open as well so I can do the turning in and out um, although the pattern as far as I'm concerned is decorative um, I, I need it so that I can have all my insides smooth lovely so I can get rid of everything that I don't need now my scissors there. I'll put my pattern to the side because I will put that up on Facebook for you. And I've got my sewing machine all ready to go. So, oh, I've forgotten something. I need. <laughs> oh no, I can only imagine what you think. But I have a view that I'm I'm quite happy to do this vlog. But. It should be projects that I need, or I want, or I want to do. Um, so there'll be a lot of clothes and things for me and my friends, and um, and I am gonna. I'm not gonna waste money on it. I, you know, I I don't think anyone would agree with that. I'm going to use bits of fabric that I have. Um, this felt is left over from Christmas nice shiny red fabric and um, this fur I've done quite a few projects with it so I need my base I need my fur and I need this layer of fur next to it And this is also, I'm actually all the right side at the minute. And then I will put my piece of felt on top. So, what I need to do is swap that over so I can have the bit with pens on it on the inside. And then I am going to turn my felt over. And I am literally going to sew all these through. So these are all the right way round, except for the felt that's been folded over to the back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right at the bottom, so that the hem is right at the bottom. And I'm going to leave myself um, a little hem allowance on both the fur and the felt. I line it up under my machine. And I'm going to sew... this all round. So every inch or so. And then the smaller projects are more fiddly with. Um, and this is very fiddly. But the advantage of doing it on a sewing machine, not just speed, but um, is it will hold together. So I'm going to make sure that I stop when I get to the top of my base. So everything needs to be sort of with the ground. And I'm just tugging this when I need to place it over. It's quite happy. Um, you know, the nice thing about having felt at the bottom is that it's not too stretchy. So I'm just stopping there so that I've got just a little bit of a hem allowance for the felt. So and I'm going to make sure a couple of reverse stitches. This is literally to keep it all in place. Now I have no hesitation. I am going to trim it. I'm not even going to try and sew quite close to it. And also... I'm not only going to turn it this way round to check, or I've used, I've used pink thread at the bottom, I'm going to have a look there to see if I've come off. You see I've come off there? Um, this is because I'm literally going as close as I possibly can um, to the edge. Just because it's such a small thing. <coughs> so, the price of keeping it tidy... I have no 
both arms. I'm not going to lie to you about this. There we go. So I'm going to keep that as trim as possible. I've got my, my little hem allowance. And then when I fold it over, everything will be the right, the right way. So it'll all be good. Now I'm going to take this bit and I'm going to literally do the same again. Oh, sorry, the fluff gets up my nose. <laughs> I love fabric fur, <laughs> but I, I do suffer. So, and then I'm going to go over like that. And I'm going to leave probably a quarter of a centimetre, uh, sorry, a quarter of an inch. I was going to say half a centimetre and then I changed my mind mid-mouthful. So, a quarter of an inch just to sew it all up again. One thing I do need to do is I need to do this seam um, now, as it were, because I want it smooth, I want it still fluffy, I don't want any seams on the inside. So that one needs doing now. I've got a feeling I didn't even catch the bottom. Oh, I think I did. Just lovely. Trim that, keep that square, and this just needs restitching. I'm not even stitched there, so there we go. Just going to weave that in there. We've got the little slipper here with all sorts of mixed thread in, which we can tidy up later. I'll get the worst of it out of here though. And then all we need to do is join up the top here and the sides and the back. So I'm going to start with the back. Now, what I'm doing, hearty tug, I'm pulling that out of the way. I'm going to line it up on my machine. Now I'm going to switch it to zigzag, but I'm going to leave the stitch length the same. So, because this is um, zigzag. Now I'm only going over two layers of felt, so I don't quite have to. Obviously, not that happy because I like going sideways. Push that down as far as we can, and then I'm going to zigzag all the way along. And I match up my seams at the back, and away I go. Now it's really up to you whether you sew on the fur side or on the felt side. Now as far as I'm concerned, fur stretches, felt doesn't. If you were making this out of fleece, which would be lovely as well, then um, that 
also stretches so you know you'll be giving yourself a little bit of a problem so i'm just literally coming up to the top now of my slipperette so i need to stop halfway up the first so that i can swap sides now it's really up to you whether you do the top first or not I must admit, I'm going to do that last because I'm going to keep everything as, um, you know, I'm going to make sure it looks nice from the outside. As long as it's soft and fluffy on the inside, then, um, that's what really counts, is what I'm saying. So, there we go. I'm just making sure that I've made as much use of that felt as I can. I'm doing it from the other side this time. And um, with the zigzag, it's probably best if you just let the machine take it. Because um, if you kind of try and reverse stitch and everything, then the machine can just do ugly stitches. Now I've done this in a contrasting colour for two reasons. One, I think it looks nice, because <laughs> I might be wrong there, but it's so that you can see it as well. There is a bit of false thought into it. Now, I'm just making sure that I've got my fur underneath, and then I'll let the machine take the stitches away. So, lovely. Now, you can reverse stitch in zigzag. There's no reason why not. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I can just tidy those up a bit. Still got loads and loads of thread. Oh. So yeah. Now the last thing I need to do is push out my toes. <laughs> and then I just need to do a zigzag stitch along the top. Now what I'm doing is I'm not lining up the fabric to the fabric. I'm lining up the shoe so that I get it halfway. Because I think that's more important than me saying, oh yes, no, I did the cutting out very well. Um, I actually want the finished product, so I'm adjusting as I go. Now I've got that all pierced, um, pinched through. I've made sure that I'm not catching the fur underneath. And again, just letting the machine do what the machine is supposed to do. I'm going to reverse it. So it's going to take um, a bit of a pounding while it goes on and off. And there we are. I can now trim that because I can see exactly where I went. <coughs> and what I'll probably do is I'm just going to grab a needle and um, I'm just going to make sure that this sewing at the top is nice and strong because that I can't get the machine into there. It, it's physically impossible. So I'm just literally going to double it over with a, a quick knot. Lovely. There we are, two booties. Um, yeah, there's not a lot I can say about that. Two perfect booties, but they don't match. Okay, well, thank you for watching. I, um, yes. Hello there. So, it must have been last week. I, um, I did a set of videos, and, um, the last one I, I sewed, <laughs> I went, oh, they didn't match up. And, um, although it, it probably doesn't, it might show actually on the video. It might show <laughs> oh, that's that, walked out the room. So, not quite storming off in a half. Anyway, so <laughs> after I'd had my coffee, I um, had a look at it. And basically what I've done is they do match up. But this one has a pointy toe, and this one doesn't. This one has a nice stubby toe. So if I literally fold 
back over they match up completely so but um I don't know I'm gonna blame myself being tired so what I'm gonna do now is I'm literally going to turn these inside out I would have hoped that I would have been able to just sew off the fur but um, obviously I can't and then I'm just going to run a line of stitches along the top I think it might be better if I trim it first because I don't want anything poking through and um, who knows what I was thinking but um, afterwards I did think it was quite funny so but it's not really a big issue I can just put this couple of minutes on the end of the video and then now you know I'm human yes so sometimes if you do do a project it is worth while just to have a moment and think well can I do that better have I really really wasted all this material so here we are we've just literally got running stitch on the machine I'm not gonna well I'm gonna do it slowly because obviously this is now quite thick I'm giving it such a good push because not only has it got to sew the backing of the slipper, the flipper top and all the fur lining, it's got to sew through the fur so I don't want it to actually um, get caught up. There we are. You just put it round the right way and trim off my little end. So, I'd be a laugh if I cut off too much, wouldn't it? <laughs> lovely a little pair of baby slippers anyway I'm sure when you make them they will look lovely much better than mine but I hope I've given you the, like ideas to continue thank you for watching it's a delight for me alright you take care now